and welcome to Pioneer Crafts with the Pen and Tang Machine Museum. My name is Nicole and I'm the curator of the Pen and Tang Machine Centennial Museum and Archives. Today I want to show you how to do three simple crafts from home. My first craft that I'm going to show you is our very popular yarn doll. The second craft I'm going to show you is how to do is some soap making and the third craft is some butter making. So on to our first craft which is probably the one that takes the longest, and that is our yarn dolls. So the first thing you're gonna need is yarn, a pair of scissors, some cardboard pieces, and a couple scrap pieces of material, maybe some ribbon if you want. Now, cardboard pieces, all you need to do is go and find any kind of cardboard at your house, and you're going to cut these sizes to one is going to be 27 centimeters by 19 centimeters, and the other one is going to be 20 centimeters by 19 centimeters. These are going to help you measure out how much yarn you're going to need for the yarn doll you're going to make. You can choose between making one with a dress, which is this one here, or you can be using one where they're just wearing pants, which is this one right here. Now you will decide, once you've cut out your cardboard, you're gonna to have to decide which one you want to do because this one with the dress is going to take a little bit more yarn than the other one is going to. So once you decided, I think I'm gonna show you how to do the one with the dress first because to make this one is a little bit easier and I can show you as I'm making one of these. So the first thing you're going to do is take is pick your yarn colors. Now, as you can see with these, I have gone with the same color for the arms and the legs, but for today, I'm gonna to go with a different color for my dress and a different, with a different color for my arms. Now, luckily for me, I have already measured out how much you're gonna need, and that's because we do these a lot at the museum and we have wonderful volunteers who actually measure these out for us. So the first thing you wanna make sure you're gonna want is you're gonna to wanna to have a couple of scraps to tie. You're gonna need two for the body and you're gonna need two for the arms. So I'm gonna cut that much for body. There we go. Now you're gonna take the longer cardboard piece to wrap around for this. So if you're going, if you're starting from scratch, you're going to want to wrap around this thing 75 times to get your body. Now, because I've already got this pre-measured out, I don't have to count 75 times, but if you're at home, that's one thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to count out 75 or you're gonna have to do some math and if this is 27 centimeters long and you're having to go around 75 times you're going to, have to figure out how much you're gonna need but I do find it a lot easier just to have one of these cardboard pieces with you and use that as your guide. This doesn't take too long if you don't have to count it out. Make sure that you're not too, too uh, tight with this because your cardboard will bend and then your measurements are gonna be a little off. All right, so once you have put this on here, and you've used up 75 times you've gone around. Now you're going to do is you're going to be collecting this here. And you're gonna take one of those scraps, one of those pieces that you cut off, and you're gonna tie this around all, all of that yarn. And it doesn't really matter where you're gonna tie this, but you're gonna to wanna to tie it very tightly. You're gonna to wanna to do a couple of knots in here 
because this is going to be the whole base of your whole entire yarn doll and you don't want it to get loose while you're making your yarn doll. All right, so once you are here, you're gonna to try to wanna to make that, move it so it's in the middle, because what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to the, the exact opposite. Okay, so you wanna put that in the middle of your cupboard and the complete opposite side here. That's where you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut. we go and you're done with that piece of cardboard so now you have two pieces like this they should be even if they're not you can always move this around to make it even now this is making the base and now you're going to make your head so you can make it super super tiny if you want or really big uh, I just like to make it about a couple centimeters and that's where you're going to take your other piece of scrap and you're going to tie that around there. Also double knot it, triple knot it if you need to because you don't want this to untangle. There, so I've got, once again, if you want a little bit bigger, so there's my little head, and this is my body. Next thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna make the arms. So that's where I'm gonna take this smaller piece of cardboard, and I have already measured out, but if you haven't measured out, you're gonna wanna go 35 times and you're going to want to go the lengthwise so that's going to be the 20 centimeters and you're going to do the same thing you're going to keep on wrapping and if you haven't pre measured you're going to have to count up to 35 let's go all the way around Now, one thing I forgot to do when I was doing this is I forgot to cut off a couple strap, uh, scraps, pieces. That's okay, I'll just do that at the very end of this. Because you're gonna need two pieces again for this one. So I'm gonna cut off, and you're probably gonna want at least 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters in total, 10 centimeters each or more. At least that though, that's how long I made mine. Now, same thing with this. You're gonna take it, you're gonna take one of these pieces and you're going to wrap it around there and you're gonna double, at least double knot it. Probably triple knot it. Maybe four times. Now, the difference with this one compared to the body one is this one, you're going to actually cut it very close to where you made that knot. The reason you're doing that is you are making the hands on here and so this is where you're cutting it to. So for me, I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it right here. Now the next thing you're 
going to do is you're going to braid. So, braiding, this is just like braiding hair. You're going to divide your yarn into three equal parts. Maybe you're gonna have, maybe a parent can help you with this, but once you get a knack of it, it's gonna be easy. And then basically you're just crossing one side over the middle, the other side over the middle, one side over the middle, the other side over the middle. And you're gonna keep on doing that until you get to the very end. If you have a friend, your friend can hold this end while you braid. That'll make sure it's nice and tight. You do want this to look pretty tight for you. But you can do it by yourself too if you like. So one over the other until you get to the bottom. Now sometimes what I like to do what you're doing here right you're making your arms sometimes I divide my rag doll up in the middle I put this in here so I can measure how long I want my arms because sometimes it can be a little too much I think I like that amount right there. So that means, so sometimes it's okay if you're wasting a little bit at the bottom. It really depends on how big you want or how long you want your arms to be. And then you're gonna double, probably triple knot this. There we go. Let's see how this looks, okay? Does that look good? I think that looks good. So that means you're gonna cut off all this excess leaving a little at the bottom as your little hands. There. You also can cut off some of that extra string if you like. So there you go, there are your arms. And now you're gonna take another piece of yarn and you're going to wrap it around your waist and that's gonna keep your arms up. Once again, at least double knot it, probably triple knot it. There you go. See how it's coming together? Now, if you want to make one with pants here, if you decided after making the one with the dress and you want to do that, all you need to do is simply, you want to divide your two, uh, two parts under your skirt and then you're just going to, once again, braid this leg and braid that leg and that's how you get this. But we're gonna go with one that has uh, little bit of, um, of a dress here. First thing I want to do is I'm going to cut off this excess so it's not hanging. And then I'm going to take just some scrap piece of material. You can find scrap pieces of material at some um, stores or maybe there's something at your house. Maybe if you have an old uh, pillowcase that no one uses anymore, you can use that or some old sheets. 
I'm going to be wrapping that around. This is a little long piece. You can cut it for however short you want it to be. I'm wrapping it. See how I'm wrapping it there? I'm going to wrap it around there. It's a little shawl. that. If you like, maybe you want to take a bit of ribbon. You can take that at the top end. Do a little piece there. Pull that through. Like that. Okay. And then you're gonna just make a little bow. Tie a little bow in her hair. So There we go, and there is our little rag doll, or yarn doll, I should say. There's our little yarn doll. So, and all you, all you needed with that was some yarn, a couple of scraps of piece, uh, scraps of uh, material, scissors, and cardboard. So this is a really neat, neat little uh, craft to, to do at home that doesn't really require a lot. Now, the next craft we're gonna be doing is soap making. And so for this craft, you are probably gonna to have to purchase some things um, just because you might not have a lot of this stuff lying around your house. And uh, we're not gonna be doing the old fashioned way of making soap because that requires wood ash and lard to make some lye soap. And that is just a little too uh, complicated for what we want to do today. But we are going to make some fun little uh, soap um, out of some shea butter. And we're going to be picking uh, some different shapes that we'd like. So this is another very popular craft that we do at the museum sometimes. And for this, what you're going to need is you're going to need shea butter glycerin soap. You can purchase this at your local craft store or craft store, or you can purchase this online. The other thing you're going to need is you're going to need some soap, a soap mold. So we also purchase these online, but you can purchase these um, at a local craft store if you have one in your area. The next thing you're going to need is, if you want, is uh, food dye coloring and um, some fragrance. This is also optional. The two things you will need is obviously the soap and the soap mold. You're also going to need some kind of microwavable dish. So for me, I like to use a big glass measuring cup because it's got a handle on it and it's easy to pour. And so you're gonna need one of those. And then of course, you're gonna need a microwave. So I know some people might have a microwave. You could probably do this over the stove top if you want, that's gonna take a little bit longer. So in this package here, it's a little perforated. So it already comes in these like little blocks as you can see at the side here and at the bottom. There's already these little blocks and all you need to do is you probably need a pair for this too is you're gonna cut out three different blocks. Three of these will fit into this mold perfectly. So if you're gonna get a bigger mold, you'll probably need more blocks of uh, soap, but that's how many you need for this specific style of mold. So now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna be putting this in the microwave. 
and I'm going to be starting off by putting it in for 30 seconds. Do not put it in for any longer than 30 seconds because you don't know how hot your microwave can cook something and any longer than that it's really going to boil over and it might it might be a little bit of a problem in your microwave. So if you do it at 30 seconds and it's still not melted, then try again maybe for 10, 15, but I would never go over the 30 seconds. So I'm gonna be right back and I'm gonna go put this in my microwave. All right, so that, my microwave was perfect for the 30 seconds. I do know the microwave at the museum is usually much longer, but I guess mine's a little bit hotter. So now, this is we're going to go to some of the optional things, and that is if you want to make a color. And I like to make colors, uh, different colors with my soap. It's just kind of a fun thing to do. So today, I am going to be making green soap, just because the Penetang Museum's uh, logo, we're green. Um, and for green, I'm going to have to use two different dyes, blue and yellow. Now, the blue is way more overpowering than the yellow is, so you're gonna have to make sure that you put a little bit more yellow than blue. So I usually do two drops of yellow to one drop of blue for my green. So there we go, just one drop. It's better to go lighter at first than too dark. And if you find that it's not green enough for you, then you can always add more. I'm using just a popsicle stick, but you can use a spoon if you like. There. Now, this is nice and light, but I kind of like it, that color. So the next thing I'm gonna do is Make sure that you have a little plate of some sort to put your little mold on just because you want to put this mold in the fridge and actually carrying it on a plate is going to be a lot easier than carrying this because you got to remember this has been in the microwave for 30 seconds. It's kind of warm. So this is going to be hot if you're just going to hold that. Okay. So now you're going to pour. There we go. There's a little bit more in there, so you don't want to overfill it. And we, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this, you're gonna put that in your fridge, and you're gonna to wanna to keep it in your fridge for at least 10 minutes. Um, I would say the longer the better. And if you keep on checking that, you're going to ruin it right so it's going to take longer if you keep on opening up the door of the fridge to check on it right so you just got to put it in there shut the door and at least le wait at least 10 to 15 minutes you don't want to be poking it on the top because you're going to find your your fingerprints in it when you're done it's going to solidify and all you need to do is peel that back and there you go 100 percent handmade that's what it says, and that is your soap. Now another thing that you can do with your soap before you put it in the mold is you can add some fragrance. Um, I did forget to put that in there because I generally don't like a lot of fragrance with my soap, um, but you can find some essential oils to put into your, um, into your soap or um, you can find some of these fragrance oils that they have online. Another thing you can do is you can also just add some more uh, natural um, spices that you have in your kitchen and you can add those. This is just cinnamon. Um, I haven't tried that yet, but I might wanna try that in the future. And so that's another thing that you can add to your soap if you like to. Now we're on to our final craft of the day, which is butter making. So all you need to do for this is you need to go into your basement and you need to find one of these. This is an old butter maker, okay? You gotta find it. It's gotta have this, which is called a dash. And uh, you're gonna find this in your basement. Then you're gonna go and ask a parent if they can go outside and if they can milk your cow for you. All right, and then when they milk the cow, 
they're gonna come back in and they're gonna put that milk in here. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to work, you're gonna move this around for about three hours. And then when you're done, you are gonna have some amazing butter. You're gonna have, the more you fill, the more butter you're gonna have. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill it in one of these, called a butter mold. You're gonna fill all your butter in there. You're gonna squeeze it out. And then you can probably sell it at the farmer's market. I'm not really sure. Uh, but if you do not have one of these in your basement and you do not have a cow in your backyard, then we're gonna do a very simple version of that, which is using whipping cream. So here it is. Just fresh whipping cream that you can find at your grocery store. So this is something that else you're gonna have to purchase. You're gonna ask them to purchase this for you. The next thing you're gonna, need, you're gonna need is you're going to need a mason jar or some kind of glass container, some kind of that has that has a very tight seal on it, because um, you're going to be shaking this a lot. So then you're going to be putting the more you're gonna put this whipping cream in here. The more you put in the more butter you're gonna make, the more butter you're gonna make, the longer it's gonna take, okay? So, but put that in, and then you're just gonna shake. Shake, 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 shake. And you're gonna keep on doing this. Now, the warmer your whipping cream is, the faster that it's gonna turn into butter. But this is gonna go for, you're probably gonna wanna shake this around for at least, five to 10 minutes, okay? You might wanna come up with some songs to sing. That's what they used to do when they were turning butter on one of these. And when you're done, you're gonna see in here that it has solidified and it's made for you some butter. Now this doesn't have a lot of flavor to it, so you can add um, salt if you like to this. What I like to do is I just like to put it on a salted cracker and then you just take a knife, take some butter, and there you go. Mm. Mm. Fresh butter. Now, if you want to get in a little bit of candidate spirit, you can always add a little bit of red food color dye. And there you go, you got some Canada Day butter. So there you have it. There are some three different crafts that you can do at home. And I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope to see you in the future. Happy Canada Day.